Hi everyone, and welcome to Dance Destinations. I had a wonderful opportunity to visit Singapore in August of 2022, and this will be my first international trip since the COVID pandemic. I had not flown overseas for two and a half years, so I was really looking forward to this. Singapore is about an eight-hour flight from Melbourne and is located in Southeast Asia. Singapore is famously hot and humid, being located very near the equator, and this was compounded by the fact that it was winter in Melbourne when I left. I do recommend bringing lots of light or summer clothing if you are visiting. I was lucky enough to get business class on the flight, which made the flight very enjoyable. One of the travel tips I wish to share is that I use a Samsung Smart Tag. This is a great tracker which I put in my check-in luggage to help me track where it is in case it gets lost on the flight. On arrival, I check my phone to see if it's arrived at the same airport, so that I'm not stuck waiting unnecessarily at the baggage claim carousel. If you use an iPhone, the Apple AirTag works in the same way. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Singapore was founded as a British trading station by Sir Thomas Stanford Raffles in 1819. It became its own independent country on 9 of August 1965. It has become a very modern and economic powerhouse in the region since that time. I arrived in the evening and took a taxi to my hotel, passing by the Singapore flyer along the way. I was staying at Capri by Fraser's, China Square, which is right next to Chinatown MRT Station, which is very central and with great access locations. The hotel is very new and the rooms are very spacious, clean and modern. It has a microwave, wash basin, bar fridge, hangers, an ironing board and a hotel safe. One of the good features of this hotel is that it has a self-service laundry room next to the swimming pool and gym. The wash costs 10 Singaporean dollars and the dryer costs 5 dollars, which is paid using tokens from the machine. The detergent is automatically dispensed by the washing machine. Another good hotel in the same area is Park Royal Collection Pickering which is famous for its sky gardens and eco-friendly features from solar power to rainwater collection. The next morning, it was out in search for breakfast. You can find food at any time of the day in Singapore and even the statues are pointing you towards places to eat. Singapore is a city of skyscrapers and nestled between these towers, you'll find Yakun Kaya Toast. You can always tell the restaurants with good food by the size of the queue at the store. Yakun serves up traditional Hainanese Chinese breakfast of soft boiled eggs with kaya toast. Kaya is a sweet spread made with palm sugar, coconut, and eggs. The way to eat this breakfast is to season your eggs with soy sauce and pepper, and then dip your toast into the eggs and enjoy. You should then finish off your breakfast with their delicious sock coffee, which uses a cloth filter shaped like a sock to strain the coffee grinds. For lunch, I met up with my old friend and we visited the hawker center at Hong Lim. This is where you go for the true taste of Singaporean street food. Gigi Noodle House is a Michelin Guide recommended stall located on the second floor of Hong Lim Food Center. 
Gigi is a family-owned business set up in 1965 and today is run by its third-generation owner, Kristen. The best dish is their signature char siu wonton noodles, which consists of barbecued pork slices, pork dumplings, and noodles slathered in their signature sauce. A must-try for any foodie. However, it's important to bring cash, as hawker centres in Singapore are traditionally a cash-based business and do not accept credit cards. Honglim is also famous for many other food treats. A great savoury treat is the Tanglin Crispy Curry Puff, which is also featured on the Michelin Guide. You might be confused here as there are two stores with the same name. The story is that the original business was run by two brothers before one left and opened his stall right next to the other brother. Do try both out and see which one is better. The curry puff is a pastry with a filling consisting of curry, potato and chicken. It is only mildly spicy, so most people who can't take spicy food should not be afraid to give this a try. Another delicious treat in Honglim is Granny's Pancake, which serves up various pancakes with different fillings, including peanut, red bean, and coconut. With our bellies full, we took a walk to Chinatown for a bit of sightseeing. You can find many shops selling souvenirs and food stuff to bring back. But one of the surprising shops here is an official Tintin shop right in the middle of Chinatown. The store hosts some of the best and widest range of memorabilia and souvenirs in addition to complete sets of the Tintin comics. Another site nearby is the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. Built in 2007, the temple gets its name from what Buddhists regard as one of the Tooth of Buddha, which was recovered from his funeral pyre in India and is displayed at the temple. Unfortunately, there was a religious ceremony at the time and visitors were not allowed in. We did stop by Chinatown Complex Hawker Centre on the second floor, where Smith Street Taps and Mikula are famous for serving craft beer, a good way to cool down in the heat. Later that day, I took some time to go film the Royal Albatross tall ship. The ship originally started her life in Chicago in 2001, cruising the Great Lakes. In 2008, the ship was brought over to Singapore, where it now provides luxury sailing excursions from Sentosa Island. It is popular for dining excursions, and some people have even done their wedding proposals on board the ship.
that's it for this episode. On our next episode, we visit the iconic Merlion and the Gardens by the Bay. Do join us for that.